So we're going to cover classes and objects. So in Python, there are many packages that we're going to import, similar to all of the shipping containers. There's so many different developers that are preparing different modules or packages that you can use. And inside of them are functions or variables that you can use within Python. So we're going to get started. Uh, this is the uh, Python source code right here. We're going to be using uh, number five, IPython Notebook. You can start your Jupyter Notebook and navigate to that. I'll include a link in the video for those source files. And it's going to take you here to your default web browser, navigate to classes and objects. So now we have this, um, this IPython Notebook that describes classes and uh, their collections of objects and functions. So there are functions and variables and, and other values. Uh, many Python packages such as time, tclab, numpy, scipy, gecko, and others are distributed as classes. So when you import them, such as import time, uh, it has timing functions and other things that you can use uh, within Python. So you don't have to write them yourself. You can import and then use it. All right, so let's just look at TC Lab. So when we do, uh, for example, an insert, a cell below, and when we do pip install TC Lab, okay, and run it, or if you don't have administrator privileges, you can do dash dash user, and it says it's already uh, already satisfied and it's installed, and you can see the location of it. All right, so I'm just going to copy that and then open up uh, a file folder and hit enter. Now let's just go find that. Here are many of the packages that are already installed and we're going to go down to TC Lab. All right, so ooh, it went too far. Okay, uh, let's just look for the TC Lab folder and here it is, TC Lab. And here you can see all of the different uh, Python uh, files that are located here. And I'm going to open up with an editor, such as Notepad++, and be able to look at this. Okay, there are things like find the Arduino. Uh, here is a class, TC Lab. And inside TC Lab are things like connect. You have close where you close the uh, you know close the the connection to the TC lab. Uh, you have other functions like get the temperature one and others. Okay, so you import this and automatically you can start doing things with the temperature control lab or with other modules that you might be importing. These packages give you. Uh, extend the base capabilities of Python. Okay, and you may not have known this, but some of our other uh, videos before on integers, floats, and strings, those are actually objects as well. So if I just insert a cell below, and let's say I had s equals my, uh, my name is John, um, Okay, and then I print the type, which is string. One of the things I can do with this string, because it's an object, okay, I can say lower. And then it converts it to lowercase. Or I can do upper. Okay, and it does uppercase. So S is a string, but it's really an object. It has a value. And it also has capabilities to do things to that string, like upper and lower. All right, so um, when you declare a new string, like in this case, or when I do lab equals tclab.tclab, then this becomes the child, lab becomes the child, and this is the parent object. So the child inherits all of the things that the parent can do, such as close, connect, uh, T1, T2, and other functions that are there with the parent. But then we can give it a specific name. And I said lab here, but we could give it 
you know, lab two, or just change the name to whatever we want our child to be. All right, so the first part of the expression is the child's name. Here's the parent's name, and we're going to have it, the child inherit all the things from the parent. Okay, this is a sub object, so it looks in tclab.py and then looks for the class tclab, initializes it, and then gives all of those properties to, um, to lab. Okay, let's uh, go on to try and accept. This is a very useful feature within Python. If you're writing code that might have errors in it and you don't want to have the program stop but be able to handle those errors, you can do something like a try and it'll try to run the code that's indented here. The important thing here is that you have an indentation. So Python does not separate things with parentheses or other things like other programming languages. It lets you know what's inside this try by how it's indented right here. So if I include something else like another print, uh, yes, and um, we're going to see that it's going to try all of these statements. And if it can't do those, then it's going to go down to this accept and then print this. All right, so it says there is an error. One of the bad things about try accept is it doesn't necessarily show you what the error is. So you got to use this outside of the try accept to get a better error message. Okay, and then it's going to stop. But it's going to tell you uh, type error, and you can only concatenate string, not integer to string. So for debugging purposes, it's good to not use a lot of try accepts. But if you have code that needs to run and never stop, then you can sometimes use a try accept just to be able to catch those occasional errors and be able to do something intelligent versus just stop the program. So if I put in str here instead of just 30, then it's going to complete all of this and never visit this accept block because it was able to complete successfully. All right, so we're going to use that here for a user who might be running this program for the first time but has not imported or installed TC Lab before. So I'm going to try to import TC Lab, and if not, it's going to go and try to install for the user PySerial and TC Lab. But I wanted to execute this code down below, so I'm going to go ahead and uninstall the package. And I'm going to go to Anaconda Prompt and just do pip uninstall TC Lab. I'll say yes and it will uninstall it. So now when we run this, I put the exclamation mark in front of it just to let it know that is a command line argument. So it's going to try to install it. Okay, so PySerial was already satisfied, but it's going to collect TC Lab and then install it. So it successfully installed TC Lab 0.4.9. All right, uh, now we're going to do a connection test. This is going to allow us to connect with the kit and read current temperatures, adjust heaters, or change LED brightness. Okay, we're going to go over in the next lesson what are the basics of the temperature control kit, what it can do. So what we want to do is first of all plug in our TC Lab if it's available. I'm going to bring up the camera and let's just see if we can see the TC lab and there it is okay so what we want to do now is go ahead and just plug it in I have the USB connection here the to the computer and what I'll do is just go ahead and plug in the USB connection right here and then plug that into my computer alright that's plugged in and then I'll plug in the power cable as well. There we go. So they need to be on opposite sides here. 
when you plug it in. Now we can connect and be able to control the two heaters and the two temperature sensors, which are right here. We can also control the LED as well. So I'm going to move this out of the way just a little bit. All right, and then run this one. All right, it's just going to connect, and then it will close it. All right, so that was successful. Everything was working. If you just installed this for the first time, you may need to go to kernel and then just restart the kernel. If there's any problem with, if you just installed a package for the first time, you sometimes need to restart the kernel. So I'm just going to run that one more time. There we go. Okay, so kernel is restarted. Okay, so here's the activity. We're going to connect the blue USB cable and plug in the white power cable to the power adapter. We'll run the TC Lab exercise below that imports and tests TC Lab functions. We'll modify the name of the object from lab to incubator and add comments to the code. All these functions are covered in the next one, which is six functions. And again, don't worry if you don't understand each step of the program yet. Your task is only to change the name from lab to incubator and add comments with the hash sign. So you want it plugged in like this. Here is some TC Lab function help. We're going to use our uh, TC Lab package that we installed. And uh, one of the things that we can do with this is we can import TC Lab if it's too long or we're going to change the name we can change it to TC for example okay and then that becomes TC dot TC lab and then I'm going to change this to incubator alright and so now instead of lab this is going to be incubator and I'll just copy this and replace all the points where it says lab I've given my child object something new which is uh, incubator and a name which is incubator versus lab and I just need to change all of those because otherwise it won't recognize the lab alright here I'm changing heater 1 and heater 2 and also the LED and then I need to close incubator now alright and if I run it Okay, it's going to run for 21 seconds. Now, this is the first time you may have seen a for loop. I'm going to run for uh, 20, 20 seconds. Basically, it's going to run through this loop 20 times, uh, starting at 0, and then it's going to go up to 20. And you can see each time it printed out, uh, it printed out the time, and the T1 and the T2. Now you can see that the temperature was rising a little bit there. Let's just turn up the heaters just a little bit more. I'm going to put those at 100% instead, um, instead of 50. Okay, just see if we can get a little bit more output on the heaters. And you're going to see this uh, turn on, and it's going to be uh, sending power to this... Uh, you can see this blinking a little bit. Let's see if I can show you. Every time it's communicating over those serial interfaces, you'll see those LEDs below blink. And you'll see that it's, uh, it's also printing out on the lines below. OK, so there it went up a couple degrees Celsius as we were observing it. We want to get that eventually up to 37. So let's go back to our project now. Now that we know a little bit more about classes and objects, this is a continuation of what we did in the last video. This is a program to be able to control the temperature of an egg incubator to 37 degrees Celsius by adjusting the heater 1. And we're going to display the heater level, Q1, with an LED indicator as the program is adjusting the temperature create a plot of the temperature and heater values over a 10 minute evaluation period. All right, so we know just a little bit more now. Uh, we have this um, package. We have import TC lab and import time. And we've connected now 
to our lab. We did this previously, but we didn't necessarily cover the reason why we were doing it. So hopefully it makes a little bit more sense now on why we are uh, calling this, importing this, and calling this function. Okay, we are printing T1 and T2, and then we're displaying, uh, we're printing uh, it, the temperatures again after we turn on the heater for 20 seconds. Okay, so one of the things that we can do is let's import one more package here. We'll add just a little bit more, and we'll import NumPy as NP, and we're just going to store uh, store the temperature values. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, something in the beginning. We're going to create a create storage for heaters and temperatures. Okay, I'll just do one heater and one temperature in this case. Okay, so TS equals MP, and then NumPy has something called empty. And I can create, uh, for example, 601 empty time values, where I'm gonna inc uh, put the temperature, I can also store the time, and that's going to be something like lin space between 0 and 600 with 601 time points. Okay, so that's going to equally distribute them, and then I'll also store my Q values, and I can do empty like TS. Okay, so these, you may not have seen these uh, functions before, but one of the ways to get help on them is in here you can say uh, print help mp dot linspace, and then it will give you some help on that function. Okay, you can also go and search something like Stack Overflow. Okay help on numpy linspace stack overflow this is also another uh, good place to find answers okay and it'll give you additional helps on these different functions or you can go to numpy linspace and it's going to pull up the official documentation and then you can look at how to use uh, linearly spaced values between start and stop and then we put in instead of 50 we put in 601 okay so that's just a little bit on that extra function there um, now what we can do is uh, we might be able to store those values as we go through so in just in addition to reading the temperature we might do something like TS and I'll just put my very first value there is going to be lab.t1. And then I can print ts0. Okay, so it's going to go to the very first one of those 601 and be able to store it there. And then when I print out, it's just going to print out that same value that I just read. Okay, we're going to need that later for plotting the results. Let's just go ahead and run this one and see if there are any errors. Okay, it printed out the help for linspace. And then it's going to continue with the rest of it. It had the temperatures initially, and then it's going to have the temperatures after the 20 seconds. It'll print them out just one more time. Okay, the heaters were on. You can see heater one was on, heater two is not on, so heater, the temperature two didn't change temperature. Okay, but heat, temperature one did change temperature because heater one was on. All right, for the next lesson, we're gonna cover functions in Python.